Ooh, rainbow. Yeah, baby. I think we found Brown Town. The fish are biting. Hey everybody, Chris Shea for Apotsky Indoors. We're in one of my favorite places in all of North America. You know, we travel probably to 30, 40 states already. This is my favorite place. Why? Because I'm a Syracuse Orangeman fan. Coming up here in the winter allows me to go to a Syracuse basketball game. But you know what else it does? It brings us to one of the best urban brown trout and steelhead fisheries in all of North America. Today we're in upstate New York on the Oswego River and we're going to show you why this place stands out. It's one of the few places where you can come out here and catch not just a few fish but over a dozen fish a day and some of the nicest fish you'll ever see. Come with us, we'll take you right downtown and show you how it's done. You're going to be able to get back up here? There he is. Got him. <laughs> Got him. Check out this awesome New York brown here on the Oswego River. Awesome fish. Put up one heck of a fight. We're going to get him back. So the Oswego River has a large drainage. It's actually 5,100 square miles. It drains the Figure Lakes and Oneida Lake, where some really large lakes here in central New York. Um, we've had a lot of high water this fall with um, the large amounts of rain we've had. Um, early snows, big warm-ups, um, followed by rain. So the river's actually been pretty high this year. So it hasn't received a lot of pressure and there's been a lot of fish in the system. We fish the, what we consider the upper river from the Utica Street Bridge up to the Barrick Dam. We fish right from the dam all the way down to the Lock 7 area, which is the most common area that guys like to fish upriver. You can also fish the lower part in the harbor, which is part of Lake Ontario. We didn't try that today. It's about time after Andy caught like what three out of that spot and I drifted like maybe 50 times. So you've got about <laughs> Finally <three>. got him. <laughs> I think that is a steelhead. You saw it? I think so. Andy wanted to leave Brown Town to get a steelhead too. Yeah. We're about to find out. We don't need to leave. Oh, brown. Come on. Nice. You lied. <laughs> we are not in steelhead zone. Yet. I lied. Oh, you thought it was steelhead? <laughs> yeah. Well, I just saw, I saw a shine, dude. Look at her. She's long and thin like a steelhead. Yep. Big spawned out then. So when John saw this fish in the water, he thought he had a steelhead. Because if you look at the fish, she's long and slender like a steelhead. She's done spawning, spawned out trout here. When she's in her prime, she'll be three to four pounds heavier, making her a 10 pound brown. Still a beautiful fish. On the Oswego, I've seen it as low as 500, which sounds like a decent amount. Like for Sam River, 500 is good. Oswego, that's a trickle. Um, today we fished 13,000, 13,500. Um, it would be on the high side of good. Um, too much more than that, it gets really tough. It leaves you very few spots to fish. Um, if you had a perfect flow, it'd be somewhere between eight and 10,000. Um, our water is controlled by a hydroelectric dam, or a hydroelectric plant and a dam. Um, right now, one of our turbines is off, so it changes our flow, even though the, the number sounds 13 is a good flow. With the way it's set up right now, it's a little tougher to fish, but we made it happen today. We're some trout and uh, steelhead fishing on the Oswego today, and we captured a king salmon. It's uh, late December, almost Christmas. To find a salmon this late is not very common, so we're kind of excited to do something different. One of the things that makes the Oswego fishery so good, why you can do large numbers of fish, it's not a very large fishery. From what is considered the lake to the Varick Dam, you have about three quarters of a mile of fishable water. So we have a lot of fish compacted in small areas. When we have high flows like we had today, it even compacts those fish into even smaller areas. And when you get those fish together, they feed off each other. A little activity, one to bite, feed, gets the other one a little excited, they start looking for food a little more. Um, typically a great day on us we go, we could hook upwards of 30, 30 fish. Um, you know, like every fishery, we have our bad days. Everyone thinks you come here and you're going to hook 30 a day. That's not the case. We have those days, which is awesome. We've had bigger days. But there's some days we go out, 10, 12 bites we work for, and that's a great day anywhere you go, especially when you're catching, you know, trophy-sized brown trout, rainbow trout, and steelhead. Um, that's the other nice part about us we go, is we have all three species readily available to us. Um, you know, I frequent the Sam River a lot over there. There's 
awesome steelhead fishery. You don't find many rainbows, you don't find many browns. You know you're gonna catch steelhead. We're here, when that flow drops, you don't know what you're gonna have on the other end of the line. We're locked up on another nice fish here on the Oswego. Not sure what it is. We've caught a, a combination of brown, steelhead, and rainbows today. This one hit at first. I thought maybe brown, but it took off pretty good. Might be a steelhead, might be a brown. We just don't know. That's I think you forgot something. It's one of the nice things that... Uh, brown, steelhead, rainbows, and... We caught a king today. All right, it's never all right. A king, baby. But the, thing, the nice thing about fishing here is you never know what you're going to hook when that float drops. You don't know what it's going to be. This one here is a brown trout now that she showed herself. She's doing the old death roll. She'll... Uh, Settle her down, get her up here, get her in the net, get a nice picture of her, let her get her back in the water so we can catch her again another time. So here we have a hen brown. She's spawned out. She's already done her uh, deed. Before Earlier we caught some males. They're a little bit darker. As they get done spawning, they'll get light again and like a little brighter. They're not as colored up. When I'm chasing trout on the Lake Ontario's tributaries, my preferred method is to flow fish. When flow fishing, I like to use 11 foot rod. I have my rods actually custom built. Um, I pair them with Stratic, um, Shimano Stratic 3000s. It's a perfect size for what we do, good line capacity. I run suffix Tritanium um, in 10 and 8 pound test main lines. My leaders, I leader anywhere from 8 to 4 pound test. I like real floral flex, really seems to work good for me. Um, we start with a float, Raven floats work great, and then we taper down our shot pattern, varying in sizes of weights, right down from largest to smallest, down to a swivel, with a leader of anywhere from 18 to 20 inches. On this rig here we have a bead set up, we can add an egg sack or a fireball to that, and you're ready to go catch steelhead, brown trout, and rainbows. We usually start our trout fishing trips targeting just specifically trout in late October. Um, early in the season we'll see a lot of small rainbows, 18 to 22 inch domestic rainbows. They come in, there, they just gorge in on salmon eggs and they provide a lot of action, you know, but we want to see big fish. You'll see some bigger steelhead. The steelhead will come in in uh, October and you'll see some nice ones that time of year, big chrome fish, and they'll stay right through the whole winter. The browns will show up, same thing, middle of October into late October. And they'll spawn right around that time, late October, early November. And the problem with browns is when they're in the actual spawning mode, they're not very aggressive. One day you might hook five or six, the next two or three days you might not see one. But once they're done spawning, late November, mid-November into December, they really go on the feed after they're done. As we saw today, we caught a, a pile of uh, spawned out, post-spawn brown trout. During our fishing adventure on the Oswego River today, we took all of our bites on eggs tied in Atlas Mike's mesh when those eggs are cured and borax will fire natural. I like natural because it doesn't change the color of my egg, preserves them, and gives off a great scent. When I'm tying them in my egg sacs, I use Atlas Mikes in pink, blue, white, peach, chartreuse. They all have their times that one's better than the other. Salmon River Blue is our best color. As you can see here, there's a lot of eggs that are fishing on the Salmon River. Now on Oswego, blue works, but a lot of times yellow, chartreuse, pink, and peach or work a little better. A lot of guys always ask about how you cure your eggs or how you store them. For me, when I get a bunch of eggs, I like curing them up. And then because they will last me a long time, I can have them cured. So tonight, like when I get home, I need to tie a couple of uh, egg sacks to make up for what we use today. I already have my baits ready to go. They're a little gooey, which I like, gives off a little more scent, but they last and I can have these ready to go at a moment's notice so when I need to cure eggs they're ready to go for me. So I've caught over a dozen browns today. We've only landed one nice steelhead. We lost one nice one. We're just trying to catch one more here today so we can get out of here. It's been a great day here in upstate New York. Here he comes Chris. Let's see what we got. We went to the steelhead hole. It's and, a brown. Oh no. no. Nice rainbow. Oh, Whoa. Beautiful rainbow. We'll take it. Oh yeah. We will take it. On the pink egg sack. Awesome rainbow here today in upstate New York. What a great fisher we have here in the Great Lakes, Lake Ontario, just providing all different species today. So I'm gonna teach you guys a little technique I started doing ever since they introduced Putsky fireballs. So when fishing for steelhead and brown trout in the Great Lakes, 
we've learned to use these beads. We use beads by Great Lakes Sailhead Company just because they make the right colors that match our spawn that's in our rivers. So when kings are spawning, that's where the steelhead and browns come up and just gorge themselves. They like setting up right behind spawning salmon and eating the loose eggs that are coming down. That's why this bead works so good because it just imitates a single egg that's getting washed down the river. So what we found with the fireballs, is we can put it on the hook below our bead. So now we have the single bead. Now we have two single beads plus the smell of a real bead because the actual bead has no smell, it's just hard plastic. Where the fireball is soft and it has a smell of a real egg. So that's one way of rigging it. The other way I like to do it, when the fish get a little more finicky, one of the advantages of the bead is that the bead and the hook are separate. So the fish don't pick up the bead as being part, or the hook as being part of the rig. So you can rig two on one line, so you have your double, double bait system, but the hook is separated from the bait. So you still have all the advantages of the bead without the hook being in your bait. Another beautiful brown trout here on the Oswego River, upstate New York. Caught this one on a Putsky Boraxo Fire Pure Egg Sack. Today's episode of Potsky Outdoors comes to you from Oswego, New York. Now we're only inches from Lake Ontario in the heart of upstate New York. We're roughly, you know, four and a half to five hours from New York City and Philadelphia in one of the best places to find an urban setting to catch rainbow trout, to catch steelhead, to catch brown trout, and other species, depending on the time of the year, here on the beautiful Oswego River. Now, all of our fish were caught today using Potsky Baraxa fire cured eggs, tied in Atlas Mike's netting, and every one of them went back to live another day. Oh. You gonna make me turn around?